Sally v. Titan is a lawsuit that was filed back in 2004 by Iraqis who had been detained at Abu Ghraib and other detention sites in Iraq, or by family members of those former detainees who've died. This case has been winding its way through the courts over the last seven years, and unfortunately, this week, the Supreme Court ended the Iraqi torture survivors' quest for justice in U.S. courts. The case brings charges of torture as a war crime and other serious violations of international law, as well as state law claims against two private military contractors, Titan and Khaki, which worked in U.S. detention centers across Iraq. They provided interrogation and interpretation services to the U.S. military. They were also complicit in the torture and abuse, serious mistreatment of Iraqi detainees. The lead plaintiff in Saleh v. Titan is Haider Saleh. Haider Saleh returned to Iraq in the summer of 2003 when the U.S. government occupying Iraq put out a call for Iraqis to come back and help rebuild their country. Upon return to Iraq, Mr. Saleh was arrested at a checkpoint and he was put into detention at Abu Ghraib. Mr. Saleh had left Iraq back in the late 80s as a refugee. He had been tortured under the regime of Saddam Hussein. His torture had taken place at Abu Ghraib, and in 2003, he found himself detained back in the same detention center, Abu Ghraib, suffering again from torture, this time at the hands of U.S. soldiers and private military contractors. Mr. Saleh and the other plaintiffs in this case came to the U.S. courts hoping to get some form of redress and accountability for what has happened to them. The federal district court judge back in 2006, dismissed the claims against Titan. He found that the Titan interpreters fell within the military chain of command and as such should be given some form of immunity from claims brought against them. The district court judge found, however, that this case could proceed against Khaki, which had provided the interrogators at Abu Ghraib. On September 11, 2009, a majority of the panel of the Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia affirmed dismissal of the case against both Titan and also dismissed the case against Khaki. The majority found that private military contractors who were somehow integrated into the chain of command with the U.S. military could not be held liable for their actions. The majority created what it it termed a battlefield immunity for contractors. This is an extremely dangerous precedent, particularly now when we have more private military contractors serving in Iraq and Afghanistan than we have U.S. military. The Center for Constitutional Rights and its co-counsel filed a petition for certiorari asking the Supreme Court to review the dismissal. This petition, unfortunately, was just dismissed by the Supreme Court ending the Iraqis' quest for justice in U.S. courts. On May 27th of this year, the Obama administration responded to the Supreme Court's invitation and informed the court that it did not believe that the Abu Ghraib torture survivors should have their day in court. Such a recommendation led to today's decision because that recommendation essentially closed the courtroom doors to the torture survivors and torture victims of Abu Ghraib. When he was testifying before Congress in 2004, Rumsfeld said that he would do everything he could to ensure that the torture victims of Abu Ghraib were compensated. Now we have the Obama administration coming in and blocking any form of redress for these victims. You can call your member of Congress and ask him or her to please enact legislation that provides a remedy for all of the torture victims of the last 10 years of U.S. policies.